Okay, so we're in town here for the Victoria, Texas Independent Film Festival, and we are talking with Tara Despain and Lydia Hyslip uh, from the movie Burnout. And uh, Tara, of course, is the main uh, actress in the movie. And Lydia, you're also the director and the writer and the producer. So the first thing I really want to ask you guys is, um, well, let's just go right into it. Why don't you give us the synopsis of the movie, and then uh, we'll talk about how that came to be. Okay, should we talk to you or talk to the so, camera? Okay. <laughs> um, so our movie's called Burnout, and it's about a girl who's a pot dealer, and she's about 30, and suddenly marijuana is legalized, and she finds herself sort of in a position where she doesn't know what she's doing with her life anymore because she spent so much time just dealing weed, and she's got these customers, and suddenly they're not calling her. And um, she's kind of having a freak out, and uh, she and her roommate can't pay the bills, and so they hear about this thing called foot modeling, which <laughs> is um, an interesting scenario that they wind up in. And uh, you know, they're they're dealing with uh, the topics of like how far is too far to just like get money. Like she's a drug dealer; they're gonna go like model their feet. Um, and the, and the main character, who's played by Tara, um, she just she's kind of having a little bit of a, a quarter life crisis, we like to call it. <laughs> so, what what inspired you to write the movie? Uh, it's an interesting concept because uh, you know uh, you hear about with the medical marijuana mm -hmm. and the legalization of things, and now it's a big thing around the U.S. Uh, was that like a main purpose of it, or it was? was. There a, um, well, we live in Los Angeles, and uh, I guess it was like four years ago, the vote for, it was called Prop 19, was on the ballot, and I just, you know, I, I was writing scenes, I was trying to like flex my writing muscles, and I was just sort of daydreaming about like, what would it be like if I were the guy who deals pot, and I was like seeing all this stuff in the media, you know, everywhere you went, it was just like signs for no on 19, and yes on 19, and it was a really controversial matter because I guess that particular prop um, was like a little unclear. I remember reading a lot of things around that time that were saying even even advocates for marijuana were against this legalization. There, there were a lot of layers and it was sort of unclear. And um, in the end it didn't pass, but I was writing and I was like, I think it's more interesting if it does pass and then she's like, I have, I have no purpose in life. So that was just, the idea came from like daydreaming and looking at real life and just sort of like letting my imagination go. Yeah, because you really don't think about it. And, I, and you even mentioned in the film where she says, well, everyone thinks this is so great, but you know, now they're just taxing everything and doing all this other stuff. Exactly. And, and you don't, you really don't think about the person. Yeah, she <laughs> I got can't believe sorts, we're talking about basically. the poor drug dealers. I know, the poor drug dealer. <laughs> well, she is, she, well, the, the cool thing too, I, I thought, I thought it was cool. I don't know if you thought it was cool, but um, that she's just like this kind of pretty girl next door. And like, she's, I think people take for granted that like, you know, like, she's not, like, this evil drug dealer. She's, like, a right. really nice person, you know? Like, I wanted to make her relatable. It's not just, like, a stereotypical drug dealer. It's, like, this is the girl who, you know, why why is she a pot dealer? And, like, what's her story? So the, so the um, impression that I got when I watched it was that maybe she had this uh, thing, like, against the man or the system. Is that something that you intentionally wrote in there? Yeah, because, like, that's kind of how I am. So yeah. <laughs> I was just, like, you know, I'm always, like, the little guy, like, damn the man. Um, so th I wanted her to be, like, you know, she lived in, she lives an alternative lifestyle um, because she doesn't want to have a boring 9-to-5 job. She doesn't want to, you know, just go along with all the lemmings. She kind of likes being a little different and uh, anti-mainstream. Right. And Tara, was that a hard thing for you to portray? Like, did you have to tap into this uh, unemployed uh, college person wondering what to do, or was this a... Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that there is a certain devastation that comes with um, being young and, and maybe and, and following something, and then when that is threatened, trying to figure out what else you're going to do with your life or if you lose passion with what you are pursuing and you're kind of caught in this crossroads of like 
well, what do I do? So for sure, I mean, I think that's so relatable to anyone who's, you know, a 20-something year old. And then when you, when you hit 30, it's just kind of like, what is my life? Like, what have I done and where am I going? So for sure, I mean, there's definitely, um, yeah, I had to tap into that depression, I guess, that comes along with, yeah. with grappling, with figuring everything out. You always see that, with the, even in, back in the 90s, you had movies like Reality Bites and yeah. things like that. But it's also interesting because you have, and I mean, I'll, I'll mention them, you have like your TV shows like Breaking Bad and Weeds, where they take your average person in the drug business and they're not your what you would picture a typical drug dealer to be. Yeah. I mean, and, and this character in particular, like, she's smart, she actually has her life more together than her roommate does, and she's she just happens to do this, and mm -hmm. it's even funny because she's trying to grow her own plant and it's not growing well and things like that. Um, did you think that that was an interesting or a different uh, take on the character Definitely. when you read this script? I think it's a testament to Lydia and the way that she wrote it, um, in that it's so unexpected that this girl who you know, is kind of the run of the mill, like you said, the girl next door, you know, this pretty girl who sells pot. It's something that no one would think of. They think of some, you know, scary mm -hmm. person who sells pot and or like um, stoner dude. Yeah. yeah. I mean you some, see that a lot in yeah. this too, just like the guy who's like the total burnout it's a scary right. like on the couch, like yeah. you know, like Pineapple Express. Yeah. Um, which is also right. a great movie. Yeah. Uh, and let's so Obviously, they had to find other things to do, and you mentioned the foot modeling thing. And I gotta ask you, like, what was the casting like for this movie? Because Archie was a, just a hilarious casting well, decision. Well, Archie is um, a singer and performer called Harmar Superstar. Who I have you heard of him? No, I haven't. He's, you should look him up because he's incredibly talented, and he's built this whole career on like he he's a little short and a little overweight, and he. <laughs> dances around stage on his underwear and has <laughs> the voice of an amazing soul singer. So, really? I mean, to watch him perform is great. And so I met him like years ago. So he was a friend of mine um, and I, we were casting for the film and that role was just impossible to cast. We saw so many people and nobody was doing it right. And I mean, some of the people in the film, most of the people are people that I knew and I was like, okay, like, you know, Tara, this part, I want you to be Ada. And, you know, the brother was our friend Chad Hardigan, and I knew that when I was writing it. So those parts were already cast, but then for the other things, like for the Booker Madam and um, a couple other sort of ca more character -y roles, the old guy, Electro, at the end. Um, he was cool. He yeah. was great. He was, he was one person that we just met. We had, we had a casting call. I'm sorry. Um, I'm you're fine. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, like, well. Um, so we had a, a, just like a blind casting call on LA Casting, and uh, the, we read these people, and that guy Electro, he just, we, you know, we fell in love with him. He walked in the room, and we were like, this is, like, I'm going to cry. This man's breaking my heart. He's genius. He's just amazing. Um, and that was just someone we met from the casting call. But, like, for Harmar Superstar, I hadn't seen him for years, and his, his real name is Sean, but um, he came into this restaurant where I was working, and I was like, that's Archie, you know, yeah. and he's, he's got like a little, you know, he has a, a huge fan base, and like, he's done a couple roles in some films, he was in, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it had Ellen Burson and Martin Landau, and he was also in Whip It, that, mm -hmm. it was like that yeah. roller derby, roller derby. Yeah. Shot in Austin, yeah, yeah, he had, um, he had a part in that, he has like little, he pops up here and there, mm -hmm. Um, but I really loved his acting in my film. I, I had never seen him in a role like that, and he was just, you know, he came into the restaurant that day, and I was like, this guy. We'd already read all these other people, and nobody was, nobody was nailing it. Like, I just knew he would nail it. And then I didn't make them rehearse at all. I just, like, wanted to get in there, like, get on set, talk about the scene, make sure everyone was comfortable with what was going to happen, but I didn't want to rehearse because I didn't want to lose that, like, kind of yeah. raw, fresh feeling. Yeah. And um, they just, they were like super pros, just like went in there and nailed it. It was crazy. It's a great scene. It's I love awesome. that scene. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's, it's like silly, but like they played it so truthfully that it, it makes it even funnier. You're you know, right. it's like they're not joking about it. And it's almost like sensitive. Like he's like, at the end, he's. He's sad, you know. Yeah. He's like, don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what's the film like? The reception of, of it been like so far? 
Um, it's been really positive, and um, we've only, this is our, what is this? This is just our third festival, and um, we have another one lined up next month in Seattle, which I'm really stoked about, uh, the Stiff Festival. And uh, so far, the people who have watched it have really responded positively, which is amazing, because this is my first feature film. I mean, I've, I've been in a lot of films, but um, this is the first one that's like my baby. So to see people reacting to it, and to I just I love watching the audience watch the movie. Mm -hmm. I'm not sick of my own film yet. I'm sure I will be like in a couple more festivals. But like I love I love seeing their response. You know, people are like laughing, and it's like wow. You know, I wrote that, and people think it's funny. It's crazy. Um. Yeah. I was, so it's your first your first film that you've actually done. Or? Yeah, it's my first like. I made it, I did everything, okay. wrote it. So had you done shorts before? Or? Um, I actually have. I've done one short, and uh, we sh I wrote it, directed it, we shot it. And then um, the footage, our, our cinematographer was like, I don't know where the footage is. This was like years ago. And I'm like, where did it, what? So I do have a right. short, but it never saw the light of day. <laughs> so did you learn a lot from it, or is there some things um, that you'll be you know, different? I just feel like that was like, I still kind of want to remake that short, by the way, but um, <laughs> I uh, it, it was my first time like having to do a shot list and you know putting the pieces together to actually make it. So I did I did learn a little from that, but um, what I love the most about directing and like what was I mean it's always a learning experience. Like every film you do, you're gonna learn something from it, and so like for the next one, I've already learned so much from this one. But I love um, I just love directing performances and. I knew that I could do that. Like I would, I don't think I would have made the film if I hadn't studied acting for 15 years. You know, like I love the psychology of acting and like shaping, doing like subtle tweaks to performances and rehearsing and shaping the performances. And um, I mean, just make going in there and doing this film and just like getting my hands dirty, rehearsing and doing it, and then seeing the results is is really gratifying. It's awesome. So what's the next project for either of you guys? Um, well, actually, uh, we're going to be shooting a film here in Victoria really? or in the surrounding area. Um, when we, we played at uh, Anthony's RXSM in Austin last month, or this month? Last month. Yeah. And um, he gave us a Texas film incentive, so we now are uh, hustling to write a new script nice. and then come shoot it here. So nice. we're, uh, we're looking at some locations and... We're just, we're really excited because, you know, the hardest part is like being able to make the film, like right. money and equipment and everything. And, you know, our burnout's like a zero budget. We, we made it on very little. So um, we're going to do it That's again. amazing because it looks really good. Thank for, you. And it's well done yeah. for the, for that little of a budget. Thank you so much. Yeah. Because it's feature linked and there's a lot of shots, there's different locations. Yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. I think this, for the next one, what I did learn is fewer locations is good <laughs> for a low budget. For right. a low budget, um, but yeah, we're we're excited. We love Texas. We're both from the South, and um, we're gonna come down here and shoot something. I think it's gonna be about trailer park witches. Nice. <laughs> no, just a trailer park witch movie. Yeah, <laughs> just your standard fare. Yeah. yeah. You, you <laughs> so. Um, is there some place where people can keep up with the film or for updates and things like that? Sure, yeah. We have a website. It's burnoutburnout.com. Two burnouts. Um, and I try and keep that updated with like where we're screening next. And there's a link to the trailer. And, you know, like if somebody can't make it to a festival or doesn't live near a festival, mm -hmm. they can contact us through the website and we can send them a screener. Cool. I, just, you know, I was going to ask if you had any distribution plans for it or... We've been we've been approached by a couple people, but um, honestly, some people like are trying to charge no budget filmmakers money to like sell their film, and I'm like, right. we don't have any. I'd love to pay you money if we had some, but um, yeah. we're currently hoping for a distribution of cool. some kind. Yeah. Awesome. Well, the movie is Burnout, and it is screening uh, this uh, weekend at the Victoria Texas Independent Film Festival. And guys, thanks so much for talking with us Thank today. Thank you. Oh.